Hello and welcome to the Arsenal Way. Back again with you guys for another Talking Transfers show, which we're looking at players that have not always been linked to Arsenal, but could possibly be, or rather should be in some cases, linked to Arsenal. To do so, I'm joined by Bailey. How do you make you good, Joel? Good as always, TC. Second show of you today. Couldn't be more happy. Or start, but, yeah. <laughs> I wish cool. the feeling was mutual. Um, Chris, <laughs> good to have you on the show, my friend. Oh, good to good to be back with you boys again. And um, yeah, I hope everyone is keeping well. Absolutely. So the premise of today's show is to look at the free transfer market. What we mean by this is obviously players that contracts have ended uh, come the end of June, of course, and will be available to sign for clubs on a free deal. We've already seen some movement in this area. Bubakar Kamara, of course, joining Aston Villa from Marseille. Uh, we expect there to be further movement of players, plenty of players, in fact, this summer, because there are a plethora of options out there. You know, Paul Pogba, Kylian Mbappe is already staying at PSG. Eddie Nketiah, of course, might end up staying. Alexandre Lacazette going off uh, to play for Lyon, it seems. Andreas Christensen probably going to Barcelona at this stage. Paolo Dybala looking likely to go to Inter Milan. But what we're going to look at is maybe some of the options that have been mentioned and others that haven't, or rather should be being mentioned regarding Arsenal. Uh, we've all kind of collated uh, who is available from the long list, uh, which you can find online. And uh, we're going to come up with some of the players that we should see, or rather we would hope to see Arsenal maybe considering. Bailey, I'll come to you for your first pick. Who have you gone for? My number one pick would be Usman Dembele, uh, simply because he is the ideal Nicola Pepe replacement without needing to spend too much money now i know chelsea have been heavily linked with him however in the past he has held talks with arsenal i think it was spanish reports have been saying that arsenal didn't um hold talks with his agent about a possible uh deal in the johnny chance window which didn't happen but this could happen in the summer i'd like it to happen anyway i think he's a quality winger he's still very young he's turned his career around at barcelona in the last six months i don't think it's fair to judge him on his time at Barcelona, you look, you look at the previous signings Barcelona have made over the last three seasons and they haven't been the best. And I think Dembele came into an unsettled environment, not the greatest of clubs. So I reckon if he does come to Arsenal, let's say, or another Premier League club, he would set his career alight once again because he's still got time to grow. And his last six months have shown that older Dembele, which you saw at Borussia Dortmund, which was, which was one of the best young wingers. And he was even being compared to Kylian Mbappe at the time. However, that is unfortunately mm. not the case. And Again, as you know, TC, before you mention it, I will mention it. You have to talk about his injury record, which is worrying. But again, on a free transfer, I am prepared to take that risk. I think that of all of the players, you know, I've not picked the likes of Pogba and that because I just don't think they're realistic. Do you think that it's I, I, realistic? Honestly, with the, the, the list of the free agent players that are available, I'm, I'm not too interested in many, in many of them, but Dembele is one that stands out for me. And the fact that he's still out there, mm. I know Chelsea are heavily linked with him. It's still a possibility, even though I do find it unlikely. But the other names don't excite me enough to, to put them above <laughs> Dembele. Fair enough. Chris, was he on your list or have you been sensible? <laughs> well, <clears throat> obviously, I, I saw his name on there and I think he'd be a great option for someone, but whether or not, that that's Arsenal. I'm I'm not so sure. Um, you know, just considering the options we already have and the potential for Jesus to come in, we know he he can play out wide as well. Um, but who knows if we're we're looking to use Jesus primarily as a centre forward and Nicola Pepe ends up leaving. You know, it does open up a, a space, I guess. But yeah, it's, it seems as if Chelsea could be the, the front runners with that one. My, my number one pick. <laughs> it's difficult because a lot of these names are maybe already talking to clubs already um and it's it's always difficult to maybe look at, at one and think yeah that would be perfect for arsenal I, I know he's been linked with different clubs especially barcelona but it has gone fairly quiet lately so this is why i'm bringing his name up but frank kessier i think he's a, a, a fantastic midfielder one of the best options actually i think um, alongside the likes of, of Pogba and, and Dabala, Dembele, you know, I, I think he'll end up going to probably a club in, in the Champions League. Um, Arsenal, I, would I would imagine. think pretty much yeah. already wrapped it up at this yeah. stage. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I remember those those stories kind of about, and it seems as if that that is sort of set in stone, really. And that's why I've just mentioned him, though, because it has gone a bit quiet lately and mm. we're in need of a central midfielder. So, <laughs> Uh, and, and, a, and a top quality one um, to, to obviously elevate the level and, and raise the bar a little bit. So uh, I think maybe if we were in the Champions League and there wasn't as much interest from elsewhere, then I'd be 
you know, looking to to get that that done. Um, but yeah, I'd say just based on who else is on the list, and obviously we've got to go through a, a couple of more options as well. He would be my my ideal signing. Put it that way. No, fair enough. Um, if something crazy did happen and say that Barcelona, the deal somehow fell apart in the final moments, then yeah, look, that kind of quality is what we should look for in a free transfer. Uh, I, I think that he will obviously end up going to, to Barcelona and that will be confirmed fairly soon. Um, regarding the possibility of signing a player that is still available on a free in that same position, though, the other obvious, I think, candidate is Corentin Toliso at Bayern Munich. Um, he obviously ended his deal with Bayern there, not being able to really break into the first team squad ahead of the likes of Goretzka and, and Kimmich. And you can understand why they're two brilliant players. Toliso moved from Leon with such a high profile about him. He was actually linked to Arsenal quite heavily when he was at Lyon. He has been credited by ESPN uh, as a potential candidate of Arsenal and Manchester United. He supposedly wants to make that switch to the Premier League and try himself there. If Arsenal were going for Tielemans, you know, Tolisso is not a bad option to add some depth to the team. I, I don't think Arsenal would go for him considering what his wage packet might be and also the fact they've renewed Mohamed Elneny already. They've got Lekonga, you know, Tielemans is there, Partey is there, Xhaka too. Is adding a Taliso making things too congested after you know those other players are staying? I mean, you'd obviously maybe say no if he's better than those options, but Taliso would be the obvious, I think, pick if we're going for a central midfielder. Um, Chris, have you got any kind of forward options? Because obviously, you know, we've there's links with possibly strikers that we want to go for or wide players. Bailey's already mentioned Dembele. Is there any wide players that stand out from the list that you would be interested in seeing coming to Arsenal? It's, it's difficult, obviously, with the news that Eddie Nketiah is set to, to stay now and, and sign mm. that new deal. You know, I mean, I must admit, I was looking at a couple of strikers even before. I know we've, we've discussed about potential free transfers coming in because, you know, it, it's safe to say if Eddie did end up leaving, we'd, we'd find ourselves needing two strikers, not just not just one. And that could end up being pretty pricey. Um, so, you know, you could have always gone out and get, you know, you know Jesus and, and then bring someone else in on, on a free. You know, I was looking at the likes of uh, Devok Origi in here. I think mm. he would be a, a, a decent backup option. Um, but now it's, you know, it, it, it becomes a lot more difficult. And, you know, in terms of other wide players, obviously we mentioned Dembele there, and I think he would be a decent rotational option. Um but yeah, it's it's very it's very difficult on on the forwards. To be fair, um, Tom, I mean, it, it, I guess we would be looking for that rotational option. So you're not going to be looking necessarily for someone to to come in and, and take over from Martinelli or or um, or Bako Saka, unless you know Serge Gnabry. Obviously, as we know, could be on the market. That's simply if you, you're offered him or offered the chance to sign him. That's a no-brainer. But you know he's not going to be a, a free agent just yet. Um, so it's yeah, it's difficult. I mean, there, I did see on here actually um, going through this list, Christian Pavon um, uh, currently <laughs> at Boca Juniors. I remember when we were we were linked with him a few years back and yeah. uh, very highly rated. Um, you know, a lot of expectation uh, on his shoulders. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's not really worked out for him, has it, over the last years? So I don't know what the reasons are behind that. You, you may know more than me, but I remember when we were to LA Galaxy, Galaxy and it just didn't really. Yeah, work. yeah which yeah. is a weird move in its own, really, wasn't it? You'd been linked to all these big European clubs. You're, you know, seen as one of the next uh, big talents coming out of Argentina. So um, yeah, it's uh, a strange one. But again, I mean, look, he's only 26 years old. Could he be maybe a bit of a wild card option? Who knows? Um, but yeah, I think really, TC, in terms of forwards, it's not many stand out to me. You've got some decent strikers on here who could have done um, a, a decent job, I guess. But um, really, we're not going to sort of look at them now, I guess, with Eddie Stain. Yeah, no, I agree with you. There aren't too many um, forwards that you really look at beyond, say, Dembele as an option. You know, players like Bernadeschi, uh, Juventus, who's moving on, Belotti, I just don't think of the level that we would be looking to to give us genuine quality in that area. Um, some interesting kind of defensive options. De Shiglio at Juventus, he's apparently close to a brand new three-year contract at Juve, but 
has, I've seen reports that he have to halve his wages to stay there. You know, Arsenal would have been able to offer a decent wage, and he's very versatile, experienced as well, played in the Champions League a number of times, but both right and left back for Juve. Uh, you've got Felipe, Atletico Madrid. There were reports about a month ago he was close to renewing his deal with Atleti for another year, um, but that went very quiet, and I don't think that's been confirmed as of yet. And as a 33-year-old centre-back, you know, we've talked about the idea of bringing maybe a more experienced figure into that defensive team. Brazilian, of course, you've got that chemistry with, with Gabriel. There'll be no issue there. He did have a bit of a, a chaos moment against Liverpool in the Champions League this season, of course. But yeah, look, I think there is options out there. Bailey, are you tempted by the, the Burnley brothers, uh, James Tarkovsky and Ben Mee, uh, as possible targets? Tarkovsky, maybe in 2018, 2019, I would have been like, I would have said, okay, no, I'll take him on a free chance. So I think now, it's not the right time to to bring him in. I think now we've got a, a type of defensive profile that we go for. I don't think Tarkovsky or me will fit into the Arsenal way, as I like to say, unfortunately. <laughs> so I would not I wouldn't go for Tarkovsky or Ben Me. But there was a defender that we missed out on. I'm really disappointed that we did before he left. That was a Masrawi for the free transfer from Ajax, uh, the fullback. I think I believe he went to Bayern Munich, is it? I'm believing I'm believing that I'm right in saying. He was available for a free transfer for the whole summer. I think he would have been an excellent signing as a backup for Tomiyasu. And he can also play on the left-hand side. So I think that was a miss there. But we all need to strengthen in the defensive part in the defensive department. So maybe last minute, you might just come in for a James Tarkovsky. But at the moment, I'd say absolutely no. Let's stay clear from that, from that transfer. Yeah, I remember I, I wrote a piece a while ago talking about the possibility of adding someone like James Tarkovsky as kind of an experienced figurehead. I feel like with Saliba coming back, you know that we've got the numbers. The, the idea of adding someone experienced there does interest me. Does it interest you, Chris, as a possible option? Not specifically Tarkovsky, but bringing in an experienced figure into that defensive line. And, and not only at centre-back, but possibly goalkeeper, we've mentioned, a third-choice goalkeeper to add some experience. Yeah, I mean... Um... <laughs> It became a bit of a theme last season, um, with the season just gone, that there were moments um, where we maybe did lack um, some experience. The thing we got to remember is that we're the youngest team in the Premier League, and you know mm. that that did sh show through. Um, but I, I don't think it's the, the, the sole reason why we maybe fell short and we, we didn't get the top four in the end, or we had maybe dips in form. Um, you could say it, it was a contributor, absolutely, but there's still a lot more to it than that. And that's, you know, getting some top quality players in this team. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you factor in Gabriel, young, white, young, William Saliba could be coming in, of course, very young. Um, Tavares, I mean, pretty much, look, our, our whole back line, maybe par... Um, uh, maybe bar Cedric, it, it's mm. very young. It's, it's very youthful. It's, it, you could say it's inexperienced compared to some of the other players in the team. So having that experienced figure in there will not hurt at all. I mean, people might think, oh yeah, but look what happened with David Luiz. It's a totally different situation. He was actually much older compared to some of the names we're talking about here. Um, and he'd always been that sort of controversial figure, um, very hot and cold, no matter where he was at, whether it's Chelsea, where it's PSG, and, and also at Arsenal. Just don't think he was the right fit, the right profile that we needed. But then again, you talk about his leadership on and off fit and his character in the dressing room. Everyone spoke so very highly about him. We, we haven't replaced that, have we, really? So, mm. um, yeah, I mean, when you talk about the likes of Tarkovsky, for example, um, English international, um, you know, 29 years old, which isn't isn't that old. Um, I mean, 29 in general isn't old at all. And, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And we always think, you know, oh, that's that could be a bit of getting on the, the wrong side of the age for a footballer, but actually, he's sort of in his prime right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, that would be maybe the the, the centre back option that I would look towards. Um, Burnley had just been relegated, of course. There'll be many, many suitors for him. I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, so, yeah, uh, you've, you've got him. I mean, Dan Axel Zagadu at, at, at Borussia Dortmund. Um, mm. uh, 23 years old. Um, uh, uh, very talented. But then again, the, the injuries on that one would, would be a big concern. That's been his, his biggest setback. Um, but, you know, in terms of physicality uh, for the Premier League, it, it'd be an absolute tank um and obviously he's french he'd fit in nicely alongside someone like william saliba 
um and uh yeah you know again maybe um much more of a younger option to to consider um but yeah like i say it's just the, the injuries on that one which would be a, a big concern but you know mm. maybe if if he's willing to come in um low wage um it's a free transfer so it's pretty low risk anyway then then maybe but um but yeah, it's uh, it's difficult. I mean, ideally there would be some. Obviously, I meant I know you mentioned um, one of the the fullbacks, TC. Particularly, yeah. Yeah, I mean another one. People are gonna. But just hear me out. John Joe oh, Kane. we've lost your mic, Chris. I don't know what you've done. We can't hear you. <laughs> John Joe Kane, sorry, the phone phone call. I can hear you now. <laughs> um, <laughs> But probably put these players' agents like ringing me up to say thank you for trying to get them a move. Um, John Joe <laughs> Kenny, John Joe Kenny at Everton. Um, I think he went out on loan in Germany. Was it not so long ago? Um, John Joe Kenny was he? John Joe oh, Kenny. Yeah, I think you <laughs> might be right. Actually, um, yeah, he I, 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 yeah, I think. No. He, yeah, he did. Sorry, yeah. when you said Schalke, I went Lewis Holtby. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, um, he did he went Schalke. I would see a uh, big experience for him. I think he's featured a few times for Everton. Um, the season just gone as well. He's a right back. He's 25. Um, I mean, look, maybe not the most <laughs> ideal option out there, but at the end of the day, we are talking about free agents. It is quite limited in that area. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, look, uh, we, are, we it's aren't doing it. Cool. I think we've, I think what we've boiled down to from this discussion is Arsenal aren't doing any free transfers. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'd be very, I'd be very, very surprised. Yeah, the options as we've discussed it, they're just not good enough. You know, players like Usman Dembele, sure, but they're just, they're, we're not in that market right now. We're not looking at a player like him. The rest are, the, the ones that are worth it aren't on our radar. The ones that are rests, you know, the ones that are left on are, are not worth What, what about yet. Christian Eriksen? I think, look, we need the Erdegaard. It's not a bad shout. We need, to the, be er, we need the Erdegaard alternative. It would really annoy Spurs fans as well. Yeah, that would be a that would be a decent transfer. That's yeah, you know, it's a good shout, uh, Christian Eriksen. I probably would take him on a free, um, and I think he would add plenty of quality. I think he did a really good job at, at Brentford. I mean, yeah. he was arguably a big push in, in stepping up their end of season push. So, yeah. Um, we'll wrap things up there. Uh, let us know in the comment section if you think we've been wrong about any of these targets. Do you think that we should be going for some of the free options? Is Taliso on your mind? Is Christian Eriksen good enough for you? Let us know in the comment section. Bailey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, TC, CD, and everyone who's doing the video as well. Absolutely. CD, thank you so much for coming on, mate. Appreciate your time. Thanks, boys. It's been a pleasure. Interesting chat. But um, mm. yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, the viewers are uh, making out of that. Absolutely. We will see you again very soon. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And of course, keep following us down the Arsenal way. Boys and boys and boys and boys.